welcome to Daily Dose of Sparkle. Today, you actually kind of have a multifaceted sparkle moment or Sandra moment. This is about lifestyle, it's about wellness, and it's about cooking. So I'm gonna show you how to make chicken soup. I have a nasty head cold right now, and there is nothing better than homemade chicken soup, and my grandma used to make a fabulous one. So I'm gonna put together a quick recipe, show you what that involves. It's five ingredients cooked for three to four hours, and you've got a homemade total health and wellness recipe. I mean, let's face it, do you remember your grandma's? And they always said chicken soup solves everything. So this is one of mine. It brings back a ton of memories when I make it, and it's super easy to do. So here are the ingredients. Now I'm gonna show you how to put them together. There's really nothing to it, all right? Item number one, put your hair up. So on the days when I wash my hair, I shed like crazy and I don't wanna have any of my hair in the soup. So crisis averted, here we go. I'm going to use a stock pot. It's so the chicken can sit in it, all the vegetables around it, and then I'm gonna fill it with water so we can make a fabulous chicken soup. Um, if you're squeamish about handling chicken, wear gloves and uh, that'll prevent like from the ooey gooeys. So I'm gonna get started with the veggies. Parsley, carrots. I prefer whole carrots because they're nice to put inside the pot. You can also use baby if you like. So with the carrots, um, go ahead and clean your carrots. So go ahead and just use a peeler and peel the outside. Now I'm outside so I don't care if stuff gets on the ground. Peel the outside of your carrots. And the only other thing you should do with the carrots is just snip the end off. So when you're done with your soup, everything you have in there is 100% edible. You don't have to worry about snipping anything, cutting anything. So there is the carrot. Same thing with parsnips. So ingredient number two is parsnips. I know that not a lot of people like these. I don't actually like these either. My grandma put them in the soup, so I do it because of flavoring. My husband enjoys them. It's a root vegetable. Um, I'm not a fan of parsley. I'm not a fan of a lot of root vegetables, so this one's not one I eat. But like I said, it does flavor the food well. Again, same thing, peel it. So you get uh, all that goo off. Goo, very technical cooking term here, huh? And also at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the, the end so I don't have that in my soup. Cut, and now that's ready. So this guy, it's interesting because she used to always tell me, grandma used to always tell me, use a whole onion. My husband loves to eat it once it's cooked, but it's to make the soup clear. So she would always say, you know, a sign of a really good chicken soup and a well-made chicken soup is when it is completely clear. You don't want it to be muddy. So why argue with grandma, right? Just do it. So I'm gonna cut off the ends and peel off the skin. What I would recommend, um, I've learned over time that cooking a whole onion, it's not that it'll take that long because it'll take a while to cook the whole entire chicken. So a couple of helpful tips are cut your onion in half, it'll fit better in the pot. And the other one is if you choose to cut your chicken in half, it'll cook a lot faster. Or just use half a chicken instead of a whole. That's it, so my ingredients are prepped. Everything goes in, carrots, parsnips, onions, and chicken. Those go in immediately. Parsley goes in at the very end. And the reason for that is if you throw parsley in now, it's going to make your soup green. So carrots will tend to make it a little orangey, but you'll see the finished product. It doesn't end up like super orangey. Oh my God, I totally got distracted. I saw something flying by. Butterfly. So trash truck joining us, which is gonna be a little noisy. So um, here we go. I'm gonna put my gloves on and then go ahead and put the chicken in the pot. A couple things with the chicken. When you take it out of the bag, wash it. Wash the outsides and wash the inner cavity of the chicken. I have already done that. And take out all of the innards. The other quick important piece is the fatty sides, cut them. So get a scissor and cut off like that icky, weird fat skin. There it is. And also anything that might be on the legs um, that looks weird. You know how like chickens come with that, I don't know, it's kind of like plasticky netting or whatever the heck that is. So cut all of that off. You don't want that in your soup. So 
and I'm doing right now. Okay, when it's all done, chicken in. So take your chicken, put it in the pot. So there it is, it's sitting pretty. And now take all of your ingredients and put them around the chicken. So I'm just gonna line them up and then I'm gonna show you how this actually looks. So if your carrots are too tall, cut them in half. No rule to this, just make it all fit. Carrots, they should be okay. There is one that is giant, it's not gonna fit. So we'll cut this in half. Now I like a lot of carrots in there, so I'm overloading this baby. You know what, I'm gonna cut that one too. That, I am strong. And parsnips, same thing. Put them in and get them all in there. You're gonna see how pretty this looks once I show you. It's like Jenga for your chicken. I get all these veggies to fit in there. Put them all on the side. And the very last thing is gonna be to add water. So I have nothing else to do with the chicken. I'm gonna remove my gloves, pot on, and I will show you how pretty that looks. So there it is, chicken and all of the veggie, veggies added in. Now we add water. So I've got my carrots, I've got parsnips, my chicken, and onions. And I add water to cover the chicken so it can cook. Ooh, hello. Got a little crazy with the water. Um, like I said, this will take about two to three hours for the whole entire chicken. Then I will take the chicken out, debone it, take the skin off and put the chicken pieces back into the broth. So we're gonna let this cook for a little while and then we'll regroup on the next steps. Hi there, I'm back. It has been two hours and my chicken soup is all done. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the veggies out of the soup, take the chicken out and debone it. So be really careful because the chicken is super duper hot and likely if you've been cooking it for a while, it's gonna break apart. So I'll get this for the veggies and just fish them out. Okay, the veggies are all out. Now the reason I do that is that I'm going to cut all of these up into actually edible sizes and pieces, throw them back in the soup, as well as the chicken. So what I do is I take everything out, cut the veggies up, cut the chicken apart or take it apart, take the bones out, cut it up into small pieces and put it back with, of course, my parsley to finish it up for a few minutes, season it up, and then it's done. So now for the chicken, be super careful and grab something that you can throw it into. If I use tongs, because it goes right into the chicken cavity and I can grab it nice and easy. So let's see, mine is already falling apart. It's very tender. There it is. Cut on, chicken in. So this is super duper hot. I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then uh, get to showing you how to, to debone it. And now I'm gonna cut up all the veggies. So just simply cut them in bite-sized pieces. As you cut these, you will notice if some are not completely done. Like one of the parsnips I just cut into felt a little bit hard, but that's okay. I'm returning this back to the hot water and it's gonna cook a little bit longer anyway. So it's not really a problem. onions. Onions are halved and again that's a lot that's kind of a big chunk so I put cut them into rather smaller pieces. That'll work as you eat them. All right, onions back in soup. Now that the veggies are back in, we're gonna get to deboning that chicken by cutting it up. So a helpful tip is to get a cutting board like this one. 
where the runoff juices can go ahead and capture in the, in the little groove so you don't get a mess all over your counter because it is kind of a messy composition. So I just had that covered so I don't have flies all over it. And it is very warm. So I'm going to do this in stages. And one of the very helpful little tools is two forks. It helps you kind of shred that meat away from the bone when it's too hot. So I'm going to cut into it with this. And it's it's definitely piping hot. Use my scissor. <clears throat> Shush away the flies. So the hottest, hottest part is that breast. That's a big chunk of meat. It's very hot. Needs time to cool. So here we go. Just take some bones out. Use your fork and pull it away from the bone. If you notice that your chicken is not quite yet cooked, that's totally fine. That's why we're doing it. Take it away from the bones and put the meat back into the soup so it continues to cook if it needs to. There we go. I got that bone out. This is about getting as much, of course, meat off the bone, but don't worry about the little pieces. I discard all of the skin. I'm not interested in the skin, but skin is what you need on that chicken to give your broth a nice um, brothy stock and really develop the flavor in your soup. Okay, so this is done. Something to think through is Keep your package that the chicken came in, that wrapper. And take all of your innards, all your guts, um, the deboning that you just did, put it in there and take it right away to the trash can. If you leave this in your home trash overnight, it will smell to high heaven. So chicken bones, discard right away. down to the last uh, breast, so the last half of this chicken. And it's interesting, it's kind of funny. The reason I decided to cook outside today is it's so lovely. It was a nice 80 degrees, you know, perfect for soup. <laughs> but I have this cold, so it just sounded really good. But uh, I thought, you know, I'm not gonna make a mess. I just had, um, the house is clean. I just had my uh, cleaning lady come over yesterday and help me, and she's so wonderful. And I'm going to keep the stove clean, so I'll do this outside. Well, I didn't think about all the flies. The good thing is I have this pile of bones, so they are definitely hopping on that and leaving my actual chicken alone that's going back in, into the water or into the soup. Last breast, done. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a knife and just cut all of this into smaller pieces. Ta-da! That's your chicken. So quickly, before the flies attack, back in the soup. Mm, you gotta taste it. Delicious. I definitely wouldn't condone tasting it if your chicken wasn't done thoroughly, but mine is cooked. So next and last item, parsley. I've already washed it. So I'm going to throw it in there for about 10 minutes, get the soup again to nice and hot. But before I do, I am gonna season this bad boy. So a couple of things that I do, let me get my hands um, just cleaned up from all the chicken grease pepper. So I do put quite a bit in there and pepper I use, I actually like to add when I'm serving more so. And then salt. Salt, salt, salt. Now it needs quite a bit of salt because I did not use chicken stock or chicken broth. I made my own. So let's open this bad boy and throw in a nice generous amount of salt. Remember nothing is salted so you need salt. I have a very special item that is actually from Croatia, from my uh, home country, and it's um, it's called vegeta. And 
the bottom line, this product is just herbs. It's kind of like a bouillon cube. It has a lot of flavoring, chicken flavoring. Well, my soup is already chicken flavored, but I added some more water before when you guys weren't watching to the pot. When I took out all the veggies and all the chicken, there was um, half a pot of water, so I wanted more broth. I added regular water because the broth has a really nice oily base already. And now I'm adding this, which will give it a little extra chicken seasoning flavoring. You can also add chicken broth back to it or extra stock, or if you're totally fine with water, just add water, bring it back to a boil, put all your goodies back in, and then you won't even know that you've added more uh, water. Now, I didn't bring my anything to stir with for this demo, so I'm going to use this real quick. Use my tongs to get, get the seasoning in there. Okay. Perfect. And the parsley. And for 10 minutes, we leave this thing alone. Then I will come back and take out the parsley so my soup is not completely green. And come in close with that camera so you can see exactly how this soup looks. Um, if it's true to grandma's, uh, grandma's direction of being clear. All right, guys, so here we are at the end. I am taking out my parsley. Done. It's been uh, cooking. Ooh, there goes my paper towel. Cooking for a while. So it gave it a nice little flavoring. There's some little tidbits of skin at the very top. That's not a problem. Just pick those out, get a slotted spoon, and just get them out, um, which I will go ahead and do next. But I really wanted to show you what the soup looks like. So I got my ladle, and I want to taste it to check the seasoning level. And there it is. So see all that goodness, all that meat, carrots, parsnips, and onions. It is fully loaded. So what I do now separately, and there's a reason for it, is I will make pasta. I usually use orzo, but if you have kids, feel free to use any sort of noodles, tiny little noodles, different shapes, fun shapes, and or just spaghetti cut up. And I'll serve that in each individual bowl. I don't put it in my soup because pasta is very starchy and it gets um, it's gonna absorb all of your liquid. So I make it on the side and serve it when I'm serving the soup. So if you're gonna freeze some of this, freeze just the soup and the veggies and do your pasta the day you thaw it out so it doesn't get all starchy and goopy. Taste it. Oh, that is so good. I will be honest and say it needs more salt. And one thing I will tell you about me that everybody in my life knows, I under season everything. So it's, I don't know why, I just, I'm, I guess I'm always afraid that I'm going to screw it up. So rather under season and over season. And then I taste and add as I need. So a little more salt has just been added. And this soup is officially done. I cannot wait to eat this tonight. I think grandma's up there watching me and is gonna say, soup is fabulous. It is clear, if you look at it, completely beautiful, yummy. And this, I feel, is gonna heal my cold. So that's it for a super duper easy recipe. Check out my blog. Of course, um, as always, follow me on uh, Instagram at SparkleByS. Check out my YouTube channel for other videos. And if you have any comments, questions, let me know. I'm going to post this whole thing on my blog at dailydoseofsparkle.com with a very complicated ingredients list. And I hope you try it. It is very easy to make. And add in veggies that you like if you're not a parsnip fan or you're like, what is she doing? But give it a try. I really like it. And this is a Croatian grandma's homestyle recipe. Thanks again for watching and cooking by us, wellness by us, all the good stuff by us. And I'll see you soon. Be awesome and sparkle.